Many times when working with metadata in Adobe Bridge, it's easy to find the metadata panel, but it can sometimes be challenging to find the metadata you're looking for. For instance, if I select this image right here, I'll take a look at the metadata panel, maybe make it a little bit bigger, and there's a whole pile of uh, fields available to me, which is great, but I've got to twiddle them open and look for the thing I might want to see. And sometimes it's in one stack. We'll file uh, close up properties. Maybe it's down in the extension. Uh, maybe it's someplace else. But then if I want to do custom metadata, I've got to go and make uh, panels using the XML format that's for working with the file info panel. And that could be challenging. In order to solve this problem, the Digital Media Services team has created what we call the Custom Metadata Panel for Bridge. And you can find it in the extensions, go and find extensions on Exchange, and then search for Custom Metadata Panel for Bridge. I happen to have it installed right here, Custom Metadata Panel. We'll crack it open and take a look at what it can do. Now, I've selected an image, so you can see that there's a number of uh, fields filled in. And just know that what we're looking at is the panel that comes with the metadata panel, uh, the custom metadata panel, and it is completely configurable. And that's the whole point here. You wouldn't want to use what comes out of the box. That's a starting point and it's got some reference content in there. But what we'd expect you to do is to um, tune it up for your use cases. But we can see what we've got right now and maybe even compare it to some of the data that we're seeing over in Bridges file properties and the IPTC core. So if we take a look at the IPTC core, you can see, for instance, creator right there. It's a creator. And you can see that I've got a field up here called creator. And there it is listed. Um, we've got the title is the job title, right? And, and it's right there. Uh, a headline, another thing that's available. And you can see as we scroll down uh, to another section, this is a headline is in here somewhere. Uh, well, it is in there. <laughs> Uh, and I'm not going to go hunting for it because that's another, oh, there it is right there, headline, right? So there's a bunch of things, description, keywords, and so on that are listed. So it's clear that we're able to create some focus by putting the metadata fields that we're interested in, in the places that we want them to be. Now, the top section are common metadata fields that you might see um, that you might see over here right in your file properties or maybe exposed separately in keywords keywords is a special case of course because it does provide a, uh, a controlled taxonomy with hierarchy and you can see there's two keywords applied to this right now july and cat but they're in the hierarchy pets cat and then months july uh, and they're recorded with a, a vertical bar between the two to show the hierarchy. You might be wondering, well, where did that come from? I haven't seen that before. This is a setting in Adobe Bridge. We think it's important that you uh, take a look at this, particularly if you're using systems outside of Adobe Bridge, because Adobe uses or Adobe Bridge uses the Lightroom hierarchical keywords structure to record that hierarchy. And then it will know it combines the two between the hierarchical keywords and the keywords field to come up with what it presents and where it puts it. So if you look in your preferences, sorry, not the camera raw preferences, that isn't what we want. So we'll get rid of that and we'll pop open the bridge preferences. That makes much more sense. We will see down here in keywords and I have activated this option called write hierarchical keywords. And you wanna to talk to your asset manager to find out how they want those keywords to come in. I know that the Adobe Experience Manager platform, for instance, it doesn't read in those hierarchical keywords from the Lightroom um, hierarchical keywords section. And so if you turn on the hierarchical keywords here and choose a delimiter, then what it will do is it will write that back into your asset management system, which is great. And then you can see that hierarchy. So I have done that. You might want to turn that on, particularly if you're working with um, uh, external systems. The other thing you can do here is tune how Bridge reads keywords uh, and the hierarchy in those keywords. And so if you're using a different separator or you're not sure what the external system is, you can enable all of these or, or a portion of these and it will read those hierarchies, but it will only write out with that delimiter that you've selected here. So talk to your asset manager. It's a good option to enable for Bridge, particularly if you're putting those assets in a place that can't read the LR hierarchical subject. Let's take a look down below though. You can see that there's some brand new metadata and this is where the custom metadata panel gets to be really cool. I have got a whole section here called Pet Shop. 
And you can see that I've got the type of pet is a dog. And there's a nice drop down where I can pick from a number of animals. Um, the name I can type as text. I can also select, um, this is what we're calling tags. So there is a drop down, but as you select values from the drop down, they show up here. It's a multi select, okay? So they show up like tags. Um, I also can pick a drop down for the uh, sex of the dog. And then there's a date picker here. I can select a date and a time as to when the dog was adopted. There it turns out in our schema, there's some additional fields, uh, including the uh, there's the adoption date, but also the arrival date, and there's um, some health and safety information that we would track as well. Um, uh, text field for the coat, and then down here, additional notes. This is what we call a multi-text. So I could type, for instance, some new notes. So this one right now, I've got low rider, food driven, beach dog, tricks, smart, and um, tired most of the time. And then if I hit return or plus, it will add it. And you can see it's in the list. Now you see a couple of things just happened and that's important. We'll scroll up so you can kind of see everything. This turned green to let us know that this additional notes section will change if I click save changes. Any other um, changes that I make, so uh, silky coat, you can see this is a text field that's already lighting up green. So this whole thing is going to change. Um, when I hit save, what that will do is write these new values onto the asset. So I'll go ahead and do that. You can see that it was saved and they're now um, green or they're no longer green. I do have a revert button. And what revert allows me to do is to discard any changes that I've made to the metadata since I first selected the asset. So it's not quite undo, it's more like reset the session back to the starting point. So if I go and click revert, you can see, oh, that one additional note went away and the coat type disappeared, right? So you can see what just happened. It undid both of those changes. So it allows you to go and manipulate. And then if you don't like what you did, you can set it back to where you started and then um, proceed. You can do this also with multiple selections, which is pretty cool. The last thing we've got here uh, before we go to show you how to set up a new panel is the presets. So if we select an asset, so we've got Leo here picked, and Leo's got a whole bunch of information that we're interested in. I can create a metadata preset, we'll call it Leo. Uh, and then if I hit plus, now I'm, I've created a metadata preset called Leo and I can apply that to other assets. Uh, it's very similar to what you'd see under window, uh, sorry, tools, create metadata template, except that credit metadata template or the, the metadata template infrastructure will only deal with metadata uh, that shows up in this panel. So you can see I've got uh, AEM tags already in a couple of places, show your love. It's another namespace that I created on my own, UA sizes. These things are uh, registered namespaces from the file info panel extension. Um, I've written a number of extensions and that's why they're there. Those aren't necessarily easy to do. And if you don't do it the right way, then you wouldn't be able to build a metadata panel, sorry, a metadata um, uh, template using those custom fields. What we've done is made it that anything that appears in your panel can then be saved as a metadata preset. So you can mix and match like we've done between some of the, some of the standard uh, metadata that we've shown up here and this custom metadata down here that you might be uh, viewing from your asset management system. Let's take a look at how we configure this panel so that we can uh, make it be exactly what we need it to be. If you have no selection, then there's a gear. Otherwise, you can get to settings from the flyout menus so and get there either way. Uh, we'll pop open settings, and there's a few things to note. First, at the top, you'll see that you can type in a URL, and that URL, if you were to enter a URL that points to a JSON file, that JSON file would be a configured panel that your asset management lead might have posted somewhere on your intranet. You can browse to that using um, a URL, and then uh, when the when the custom metadata panel opens, it will load that JSON and then form the panel from the JSON. If it isn't obvious, we're using JSON to describe the panels um, and we'll see how we can edit that manually. But the, the good thing for us here is that if you have an asset manager who configures a panel using the editor or even by hand, there's nothing wrong with doing it by hand, 
they can then export that panel and then post it somewhere on the internet and then everybody can see it. If you don't like that model, then what you can do is to drag and drop a JSON that was shared by somebody uh, onto this panel. This is a drop zone. So if you just drop a JSON file on there, then it will load it as the new panel for um, uh, uh, that you would see with metadata here. If you make a change to the JSON location, which would be to type in a value here, you can see this just turned blue. That tells us that there's a change. We'll get rid of that. It now knows that there's no change. Uh, or if I dropped a new file on here, then I would need to save that new location. And that would then direct the panel to point at that, either at that uh, remote location, that URL, or at that new file somewhere else on your computer. If you don't want to do either of those things, you can use our view editor. So I'll crack open the view edit, the view editor. It is a separate panel uh, and operates as a separate panel. Uh, and you can see there's a few important buttons such as add metadata and then edit. Uh, you can see those right there. If your metadata panel or your metadata form has options, you can view those options by clicking on it. You can see that this is also JSON. This is just an array. You can rearrange. So if you don't like where this is, I can drag it up to a new spot and let it go. I'll deselect it there. You can also see if I click, I can delete if I want to. I can also, we'll put it back where it was, which was there. Um, I can also edit. So if I click on edit, you can see that I can change the type of field. And I've got a number of items here available, not just section divider, but AEM tags, and we're going to make an AEM tags in a moment. Um, it's a very special kind of form. It takes very specific uh, JSON coming out of AEM. AEM is the Adobe Experience Manager, and this is a very common application. We've been asked about it, and we actually have a separate tool that's called the AEM tags panel for Bridge. This can replace it for many use cases because it can put those AEM tags in the same place as other custom metadata that would be applied from AEM, which is pretty cool. A common field is a date. We have a, a dropdown that would allow you to select one item, a multiple dropdown for multiple items. Same with text and multi-text. Section divider is, well, it's a section divider. And then tags allows you to define a number of items that are, so you can limit a multi-select, but you can type them. So um, kind of like keywords where you've predefined the keywords uh, as opposed to um, what I'm uh, in my form, I have multiple text for keywords. So I could enter any keyword I wanted there, but I could limit it by choosing tags. And then I would have a specific set of values that I could type and it would type ahead and it would find them. Let's say cancel because I don't want to make the change here. What I would like to do is add AEM tags. You can see I have a whole pile of thing, a whole bunch of stuff here. And again, you can look at these and see some of the values there. Um, you're going to get some advice as you go and uh, create a, a, a new metadata item or add and delete what's here. If you add metadata, then as you change the type that you're adding, you're going to get some advice over here. So I'd said we're going to add AEM tags because it kind of shows lots of different things going on at the same time. Because AEM tags is a known target and it has a very specific structure, we've pre-filled in some values for you. For instance, we've filled in the prefix, the namespace, the XMP property, we've already put it in there. And then you'd want to give it a display name, probably something like AEM tags would make a lot of sense. And then of course we need some options in order to save it. So we'll go to options and this is currently blank. And you think, where can I get uh, the JSON, the specific JSON. Well, we provided that for you. So this is where you would find the JSON for AEM 6.4. You're going to enter in your URL and then content CQ DAGs tag tree JSON. And up here, if you're in 6.3 or under, then you can visit a slightly different URL. And what you're going to get, I happen to have some here, so let's go take a look, uh, looks like this. So if you you visit that page, it's going to kick out some JSON, depending on your browser, it may or may not format it for you. Um, it can be pretty hard to see. So what we want to do with this is reformat it just so it makes more sense. And I'm going to use this, I happen to use TextMate for this, but there's lots of different ways to do it. Um, I have a JSON reformatter here. And what that will do is make it so I can see it a little bit more cleanly. And the reason that I wanted to show this, oh, this is not the one I wanted. Uh, not 
don't know why. This is the thing I was looking for. So, huh, I wonder why I saved it like that. I shouldn't have been, but this is okay, because this is the thing I care about is the um, AEM tags right here. Um, so this is another one that we had uh, AEM tags before, and the AEM will clean it right up, but it looks just like this. All right, let's so do that, and then uh, we'll go down to the bottom and get rid of some of the stuff on the bottom. Uh, I can't get down there, and we're almost there. Hey, I shouldn't have should have done this a little bit differently. That's okay. I'm not going to stop because uh, that's we're getting near the end of it, and that's important. Okay, cool. So we'll get rid of this, and that will be that's that. So if I reformat again, uh, this will look better. And the reason I know this works is because I had copied and pasted the, the JSON directly um, prior. So, all right, cool. Great. So this is AEM tags JSON. It starts with namespaces. You can see it right there. And it lists the namespaces uh, starting with default. And then it goes to experience fragments usually, although not always. And there's a bunch of others. And the reason I use TextMate is because I can close up the tags and see the top level namespaces. So I, this makes it easier to see what I'm what I'm looking at. So when I went to my AEM instance, I had a few, I had default, which is not very exciting. Experience fragments, maybe not so useful to me. The ones I really care about are pet shop and pet rescue. So what I'm gonna do right now, just for convenience is delete default and experience fragments, get rid of the comma as well, okay? And then we'll keep pet shop and we'll get rid of properties and workflow. So we'll delete that. So just by closing that up, it makes it easier to see. And then this means that I can go and copy and we will be, let's see what the namespaces goes to that. And then that goes to make sure it's right. goes to there. I think we don't need that right there. Okay. So let's see about reformatting one last time. Make sure it works for us. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see right there. Oh, that's better. Yeah, it likes that. See? Cool. So we'll select it all and we will copy it. So I've got two pet rescue and pet shop are my two namespaces that I care about. So we will, I just copied it. And again, when, when you're looking at this, you're going to get, um, and you need to keep namespaces and just select the specific namespaces that you want to show up in the panel in bridge so i've got it copied we'll go over to bridge and i'll paste my options there i went through a lot of trouble to narrow it down you don't have to do that you can just copy and paste exactly as it comes from your browser and it will do what it needs to do but again the key is at the very top of it you do need to have namespaces and then have these specific namespaces defined very there's a very specific structure that they have to follow so make sure that you copy and paste and then we'll say save and now i have aem tags is in there and it will put it at the bottom if i want to move it around i can drag it up and down like we had shown before now the panel hasn't been saved yet uh, and it will be when i click save so we'll go and hit save it has been saved you'll notice that the template path just changed um, and the template path is useful to you because if you want to go and find it and maybe copy it and give it to somebody else you could find it there or you could just export to JSON. So it will pop up a file browser. Where would you like to save it? And we'll say, yeah, go ahead and save. And it will go and replace it. And ba-boom, now I have a copy that's somewhere else. You'll notice that it didn't change the current template path. So exporting to JSON doesn't change where I'm um, looking in terms of my file. So I'm done with that. I'm going to close this up. You'll notice I didn't change my JSON location from its perspective. It knows where it's supposed to go. Um, oh, I think I did. Uh, so this, this may be a little interesting. We'll see what happens. We'll say done right now. That should load, reload. That's exactly what it did. So it reloaded. And now if I pop open that and go down to the bottom, you can see AEM tags successfully added. Now, how is AEM tags different? You can see I've got a lot of AEM tags already on the asset. And if I click over here, you can see there's my two namespaces, right? Pet Rescue, Pet Shop. I can drill a little bit deeper and see dog. There's the kind of dog and so on. And I get down to chocolate lab. That's great. I can also type ahead. So if I type in uh, chocolate, right, you can see where it's starting to highlight and it's blue because it's already been selected. So I know that that's already there, but I might pick uh, schnauzer, right? 
S-C-H-N-A, and I'm getting to Schnauzer, so I'll select it, and it would get added. Oh, I guess it was already there, too. But we have a lot of dogs selected <laughs> in this set of tags. Um, it has made a change, so it knows that, and it's expecting us to save changes, so I'll go ahead and save the changes. The metadata was updated. So that right there is the custom metadata panel for Bridge. We think that you'll get a lot of value out of it if you use it. And um, if you do use it, let us know about it because uh, it's a tool that we built to try and allow you to focus your work on the metadata so that you can better interact with your asset management system. Thanks so much and happy metadating.